Hmm, that's strange. I, I entered the link from the Google Classroom. Maybe it's the old link, something like that. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, this today. Okay. So uh, what are the first topic that I would like to talk about? So uh, please turn off your microphone maybe. Uh -huh. Okay. So, fir so first one is spanning. Okay. So what is spanning? Spanning is a property that is related to uh, how how so spanning is related to how how different vectors can can generate vector space okay well uh, in order to understand this let me uh, give an example okay so if we say that uh, we have some vectors like uh, 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, and uh, 0, 0, 1, OK? So this is, these are the, vec the uh, vectors that can span any vectors in R cubed, OK? So when we say R cubed, we mean a vector with three dimension, which is x, y, z. Okay. And uh, uh, it is quite obvious that uh, these are the unit vectors, right? All of these, they are the unit vectors. <clears throat> and you can use these three vectors to generate any arbitrar arbitrary vector x, y, z. So if I have x, y, z, and I want to build uh, this vector from these unit vectors, then <clears throat> I, what I can do is very simple. I can just do it like this, x times 1, 0, 0, and plus uh, y times 0, 1, 0, and then plus z times 0, 0, 1, OK? So it means that we can use these uh, unit vectors to generate to generate any arbitrary vectors x, y, z. Okay. So okay, and also uh, for these unit vectors, they have different properties. Okay. First of all, these unit vectors, they are orthogonal. Orthogonal vectors, okay? Meaning that uh, each of these, let me call it E1, E2, and then E3, okay? If you multiply any of these, which is E1 transpose with uh, a different vector, which is, for example, E2, you always get something like zero, okay? Always. Um, actually, you, you don't get a zero vector, you get just zero, okay? So these three unit vectors, E1, E2, and E3, they are uh, unit vectors. And also they are orthogonal, okay? They are also unit vectors because the length or the size of each vector is just uh, one, okay? And then we also have another name called orthonormal, orthonormal vectors, okay? So for orthonormal uh, here, I can write it as generically, like EI times EJ, okay, equal to zero. 
And then if I say that it's orthonormal vectors, it means that EI, the size of it is one, okay? So the size of it or size of it square is one. Uh, they're all, they're the same thing, okay? Okay, so there always there there are some sometimes there are question related to how do you test whether uh, some column vectors help span some type of um, vector space. Okay, for example, uh, example number two. Okay, so we can say that from the previous example. Okay, these the matrices which consist of E1, E2, and E3, okay, from the previous page, which were which is one zero 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 one zero and zero zero one. Okay, we can say that uh, this the uh, uh, matrix with the column vectors E1, E2, and E3, they spans are a cube, okay. Or sometimes we can write it like this. We can separate them. We can just say one zero 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 one zero, and then zero zero one. Okay, that uh, it spans are cubed. Okay, are cubed mean any vectors with three dimen with three um, uh, with three elements. Okay, or sometimes we can write it as just like this: e one, e two, and then e three. Okay, spans are Q. Okay, so that depends on how you write it. Okay. So next, let's look at an another example. Okay. So uh, let's say that we are given a, a matrix, which is the a matrix with column vector. Let's say is minus one, zero, 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 one, two, zero, zero. 2 minus 1, 10, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, okay? And let, let's say that uh, when you're given such a, a matrix, and a question is, uh, let's say this is A, okay? So the, a question is, does A span vector space, for example, RF to the fourth or not, okay? And uh, how do we test whether these column vectors span certain vector space? So let me go back to the previous page, okay? So if you go back to the previous page, we will notice that uh, one of the reason why uh, these uh, metrics span R3, okay, is because I can multiply A with any uh, vectors like x, y, z, okay, and then I will get uh, x, y, z always, okay, by letting, um, anyway, meaning, so, so you notice that uh, uh, the reason why A can help span any three-dimensional vector is because um, in order to, uh, to span, this uh, x, y, z, okay, what we can do is we can just multiply x, y, z, and then we get x, y, z, all right? And one of the reason is because all these pivots, you know, they are non-zero. So they are non-zero pivots. Okay. So uh, one in one way, so in order for us to test whether a matrix will span vector space like the max for example in this case like the the maximum dimension it can be or not okay so we just need to look at the pivots okay so in this case the if we see that here we have uh, the pivots that are non non zero okay and then suddenly you have one pivots Okay, which is the zero pivot. Okay, then in a way, you know, from uh, previously, from what we learned earlier, this is like considered like free variable, right? From the linear 
a general linear equation. So when you have such a free variable, it means that uh, if you want to use these column vectors, okay, to generate R4, it's not possible. It's not possible because of the free variable. Because of the free variable. Okay. It means that uh, if you want to use A, okay, and you multiply uh, certain values like uh, A, B, C, D, in order to generate any arbitrary, let's say X, Y, Z, W, okay, so these are like coefficients. And these are like the arbitrary uh, vectors, okay? If I go back to the previous page, maybe I should write it like this so that it's a bit nicer, okay? So let me go back to this page very quickly, the previous page. And instead of writing here as X, Y, Z, I will write it as A, B, Z, A, B, C, okay? To, in order to represent that these are coefficients of each column vector, of each column vector of A, okay? And this is like the arbitrary, okay? So for this type of uh, system, um, I can just say A is X, B is Y, and then C is Z, okay? So it's quite simple to construct any arbitrary vector x, y, z by just uh, uh, sum up the column vectors with different weights, with the x weight, y weight, and then z weight. Okay. But then on the other hand, if I come and look at uh, this uh, page, if I want to construct any arbitrary vectors x, y, z, and w, okay, so I need to add up uh, each column, each column vectors with the with the a, b, c, d, right? But because of this free variable, it means that uh, I don't have a unique. I don't have a unique d coefficients in order to generate x, y, z, w. And uh, so in this case, we say that it does not span R to the fourth, okay? In fact, um, for this matrix A, it will span only R cubed, okay? Because it only has the, it only has the three non-zero privates. So when we say spanning, okay, let me go back to the, the definition again so that it's a bit more, uh, it's clearer, okay? So let me go back to slides, okay? So when we spanning, we talk about, uh, it's related to how column vectors can generate um, any, any uh, vectors uniquely, okay? in a vector space. Okay. So we need to make sure that uh, we have this uh, precise definition for spanning. Okay. And uh, so, so, so in general, how do we test for uh, spanning? So in general, how do we test for spanning? So there are two steps. One is to use the Gaussian elimination, okay? Okay, on the matrix A, okay? And then we can check if all the pivots are non-zeros. Okay, so only two steps, you know, in order to check uh, for sending. Okay. 
Okay, so you sort of understand what it is now, right? So next, uh, let's look at uh, another concept called basis. Okay, so this basis is related to uh, the vectors, like the unit vectors that we talked earlier, okay? So when we say basis, we mean the vectors with the following, with the following uh, properties. Okay. Uh, number one is we need to have the uh, property of orthogonal or linear independent. or orthogonal, okay? And secondly, uh, these bases, they have these vectors, which are called bases, they have to span a vector space, okay? Uh, uh, let's say some, for some example, for example, if you look at uh, from previous example, Okay, so if you look at uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, okay, uh, these are considered bases, and we often call it standard bases, okay, because they are very, uh, very traditional bases that can be used to generate or span. Uh, it can spans R3, okay? But uh, there are some other, there are some other uh, bases also, you know, that may not need to be in only in this form, okay? For example, we can take a look at uh, this type of bases, like, uh, let me see, uh, let talk about four dimension, okay? So let's say we have one, 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 okay? And we have one, one, zero, zero, okay? Uh, but uh, let, let me make it, uh, instead of I write it as zero, zero, let me write it as minus one, minus one, okay? And I can have one minus one, one minus one. And I can have uh, one minus one, minus one, one, okay? So these are also bases that can span our fourth, okay? Meaning that if you put all these column vectors in an A matrix and then you use Gaussian elimination, you have non-zero pivots. That's, so it spans, okay? And also for each of these, let me call E1, E2, E3, and E4, okay? So can any of you try to compute um, the linear independence or the orthogonality, which is, let's say I do E1 transpose times E2, what do I get? Okay. Hmm. Okay, so Thanat, can you try to... Uh, compute the multiplication of these two. So what do we get as uh, E1 uh, transpose? Is Thanat here? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we can write one, 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 one like this. And then for E2, this is transpose, so we change from column vectors to a row vectors. And then for E2, I have one, one, minus one, minus one, okay? So if I multiply this, what do I get? Can anyone tell me? Zero. Zero. Sure, yeah, but then because you have one times one, which is one, plus one times one, which is one, and plus one times minus one, which is minus one, and then minus one, okay? So you get zero. And you can try this to any any pairs, okay? So for any pairs of uh, these four column vectors, when you do the uh, multiplication, uh, you can also call this as inner product as well. 
okay? Then you get all zero, okay? Of course, you can uh, look at very standard basis for four dimension, which is one, zero, zero, okay? Or, and zero, one, zero, 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 one, okay? And uh, zero, zero, one, zero, okay? So this will be a uh, standard basis for uh, to the fourth or the four dimensional um, vector space, okay? Okay, uh, next concept is called dimension. Okay. So in matrix analysis, what do we mean by dimension? Mm -hmm. uh, we say that uh, a vector space, okay, has has a dimension n okay a vector space that's called v has a dimension n if the basis has n elements okay For example, if we take a look at uh, previously for uh, standard basis on previous page, we have one zero 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 one zero zero as the standard basis, okay? And then zero zero one, okay? Uh, because these are the basis, Okay. By the way, um, we can call the you can call this as basis vectors. Okay, but sometimes uh, if you write it in plur plural form, okay, sometimes you can just say basis. This is like singular, but uh, if you write as as plural form, it becomes basis. The i becomes e. Okay, so they are the same thing. So in this case, we say that uh, the dimension of the vector space will be equals to four, okay? So, I mean, for this type of matrices, it will be very, for the vector space that consists of all these uh, vectors, it will be very quite, it's quite difficult, easy, it, uh, very easy to uh, determine the dimension, okay? Let me look at another example, okay? So let's look at another example. Let's say V is a vector space, okay, of any continuous function, okay, on the range of minus pi to pi, okay? So, we are looking at continuous function in this uh, range of uh, input, okay? So if I write it as minus pi to pi, okay? So in here you can have so many, many, uh, so many of the, pos any continuous function, okay? For example, you can have uh, maybe just a, maybe constant value, okay? in this uh, range, okay? Let's call this like an x-axis. You can have, a, you know, some continuous function which is like a sine, something like that, right? You can have a, the continuous function which are like this, you know, or something like this, you know, anything is possible, okay? And uh, <clears throat> for this type of vector space, uh, what are some of the bases? Okay, so uh, if you remember, okay, I have, okay, so maybe I ask you some question about this. If you want to construct any continuous function, what can be the basis of this, this type of vector space? So what are the bases? Okay, so basis, here is a function. It's not the. It's not matrix or vectors. 
So if you want to construct any continuous function, what type of basis can you use to construct? You can, do you know? Mm -hmm. Can you guess? Yes, no. Tanatsan, can you guess? No. Well, have you learned about Fourier transform, Fourier series in the past? Oh. Okay. Yeah, some of the basis yeah. can be like a cosine of uh, x, cosine of 2x, in all the way to cosine of, I don't know, nx, you know, and etc. You can also build the continuous function, you know, uh, this is from like Fourier series. Uh, for, well, actually, you can write as, yeah, you, you can do it, Fourier series, no? So any continuous function can be constructed from the summation of cosine of many different frequencies and also sine of many different frequencies, okay, infinitely, okay? So in this case, because they are, they are infinite, infinite basis function, okay? They are not vectors, they're just functions, okay? So in this case, what is the dimension of this vector space? Can you guess? Here, uh, on the previous example, we only have four bases, right? We, have, we only have four basis vectors to construct any arbitrary uh, vectors with four elements, okay? But here, on the, on the other hand, this vector space of continuous function within certain range of, within certain uh, input, it has infinite number of basis functions to construct any arbitrary continuous function, okay? So here we say that the dimension of this vector space is infinity. Okay. So it depends on how you look at it, okay? So uh, this vector space, you can look in terms of just matrices, you can look in terms of function, you can look in terms of um, Galo field, you know, like uh, the vector space of vectors with Galo field and so on, you know, and so there, so it's very generic way. Okay, so next uh, item I want to look at is related to the geometric uh, notation. Okay, I don't think we talk much about this, but we sort of like uh, guess that we know what it is, but let me talk about it formally uh, briefly, okay? And then we'll go to the least square approximation. Okay, okay. so for the geometric, Geometric notation. Ah, actually, wait, wait, wait. Let me talk about another topic first. I think I missed it last time. One moment. Let me uh, let me look at this topic a bit quickly, and then we come back to geometric notation. Okay. Ah, yes. Okay. Just two slides. Ah, okay, so last time I um, before the midterm, we were looking at uh, the concept called uh, general linear system, right? Where we have a system called a x is equal to b, and we try to solve what is the x, right? And in doing so, what we did was we look at the matrix A and we try to um, we try to determine the number of fixed variables, okay? So what we did at that time was we convert this matrix A by using the Gaussian elimination and we look at the pivots. So the non-zero pivots, they will uh, correspond to the uh, fixed variables, okay? And then for the zero pivots, Okay, they will be referred to the free variables. Okay. okay. 
So if we have the matrix A, which is which has the mention of m times n, which is m rows, and then also n columns, okay, then what we have is the so for the number of fixed variable, okay. Uh, this will correspond to the column, the column space of uh, matrix A, and so this number of fixed variable is actually correspond to the dimension of the co column space of A. Okay, and then for the number of free variables, they refer to the dimension of the null space of A. Okay. So, um, so in corresponding to this type of notation, so uh, as n is the number of columns, okay? So we will say that n, which is the number of column of A, okay? It, it is equal to the dimension of column, uh, column space of A plus the dimension of uh, now space of A, okay? If there's no free variables, uh, all the columns will have the non-zero pivots. So in that case, you can say that uh, N or the number of columns is equal to the dimension of column space of A, okay? But from uh, the previous example, when we looked at the general linear equation or general linear system, so, uh, Often time, when you have the matrix A in the equation, you have some fixed variables and so uh, if you have, if you remember, if you have only fixed variables, it means that you can solve the unique solution, right? Whenever you have the number of, whenever you have three variables in the matrix A, then what happens is you will have infinite solutions, okay? Uh, this dimension of the column space of A, sometimes we call as rank, okay? Or RK of A, and then plus dimension of uh, null space of A, okay? So for example, if we have an uh, matrix A in the general linear system, for example, is like this, just an example. Okay, and this is A with the dimension, with the, with the size of A uh, three times four, okay? So you see that uh, they are uh, one and two pivots, okay? And then you have zero uh, pivots as well, okay? So in this case, we say that uh, uh, the number of fixed variables, which is the mention of column space of A, which is the rank of A, this is equal to two. And the dimension of the null space of A, uh, this is equal to two as well, okay? So, uh, so this is how we uh, try to associate uh, different uh, concept together. So if you understand this type of uh, concept and vocabularies, you know you will not get so confused when you look at a more a more how do you say it a more complex you know explanation. Okay. So this is where I want to have a short detour, okay? Now let me go to the topic that I uh, we just uh, looked at, uh, almost looked at like a few minutes ago, okay? Um, well, so, so I want to veer to the geometric notation briefly before we can uh, go to the least square approximation, okay? So, as you said, as you know that uh, we were looking at matrix, matrices and vectors, right? And uh, so when we try to use these matrices and vectors to uh, 
to talk about you know some equations solution or we try to use it for some other purposes often time we will have to look at this geometry geometric no notation okay and here we refer to the geometric uh, notation for the vectors okay so let me let uh, a is a vector let's say is a b c okay with three elements so number one what is the geometric notation the first one is length okay if we have a vector a b c and we want to find the length uh, what is it so uh, you can associate this with the vectors in general right okay so if you have like a, a, a vector space of x y z okay and a maybe a is just in here let me change colors maybe a is just uh, somewhere here okay and it's equal to a b c okay where x e is equal to a y is equal to b and then uh, z is equal to z yes okay so when we say when we want to find the length of our vectors what do we mean so the notation for the length is like this it's just uh, the s size of vectors a okay so you can call this thing you can call size, you can call length. I guess there are different ways to look at it, okay? Or some people call it as norm, N-O-R-M, norm, okay? And it is equal to the square root of the elements in the vector square, and then sum together, okay? And uh, this is called sometimes called L2 norm, okay? So the word norm is just uh, a more generic concept of size or length, okay? So the word norm is just uh, a generic name for, for length or size, okay? So sometimes you can have some other norms, okay? When we say length, we talk about this the meaning, okay? This is length. Okay, but for the norm, sometimes they have some other norms. You can have other norms, okay, such as uh, the size of A, but this is like a tilde. Maybe this is just uh, A plus B plus C, you know. I mean, it's possible. There are, there are different ways of uh, definition for norms. That depends, okay? So length is just a special case of the norm, and it is called L2 norm, okay? So, okay, so when we have this type of notation, the size of A or the length of A, if I square it, okay, I will just have A square plus B square plus C square, okay? And... Uh, so here I can write it as a transpose, vector A transpose multiply with vector A, okay? Therefore, in terms of vectors, the size or the length of A can be written as square root of A transpose multiply with A, okay? And uh, so what are the properties of the length Uh, number one, the property of length is the length is always greater than or equal to zero, okay? Because it's a square root of the sum of squared of elements, okay? Uh, number two, if I have the length of A equal to zero, then what is the vector A? Yeah, I think you can guess, right? Then it has to be vec zero vector, okay? Uh, number three, if I find the length of a constant value, a scalar value multiplied with the vector A, okay? This, this will be equal to C times uh, the size of A, okay? And I think I should write as a 
uh, absolute value. Okay, because C can be positive, it or it can be negative. Okay, and then uh, there's a fourth uh, property that says that the size of or the length of is of any two added vectors will be less than or equal to the length of each vector added together. Okay, and this one is always is often called a triangle. Uh, inequality. Okay. So these are some property. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, let's take a look at uh, another concept called uh, projection. Maybe you have seen this before, but let me see how much should I talk about it. Okay. So let's talk about projection very quickly. Okay. If you have seen it already before, it's okay. So the next one is projection. Okay. So projection is related to how you uh, project one vector to another vector. Okay. So let me uh, first construct uh, this type of uh, pictures. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at the two-dimensional case for the vectors. And let me change the colors to the red colors, OK? So what is this? Let's say that we have a vectors B, OK? And uh, we want to uh, project it onto a vectors A, OK? Let's say vector A is here, OK? So. Uh, what do we do when we say we project? So basically, we will uh, project these vector A's onto these vectors in the direction of vectors A. Okay. So basically, what we say is we project vector A onto vector A. And uh, when we project B onto A, because it is in the same direction as the vector A, so here for this part, we can call this as a, let's call it as XA, okay? Where X is just a scalar value, okay? And typically, it's, it will be smaller, right? Then the size, the length will be smaller than the vector A, okay? Um, we can also define another, uh, we can define an angle here, okay, which is an angle between uh, vector B and vector A, okay. Uh, we can also define this vector, okay, if I write this as a B and I connect B with uh, minus XA, okay? So if I do that, what I will have is the, these vectors, okay? We call this vector as an error vectors, okay? And, and in, an important uh, property for the error vector is like this, okay? So this error vector from the projection or E, okay, is equal to B minus XA, okay. Okay, and uh, an important property is like this. An important property is like this. You will notice that these the vectors A, E, let me use the red colors again also. This vector E is always perpendicular or orthogonal to A. E is orthogonal to A, okay? So sometimes we say that uh, A is orthogonal to A or is orthogonal to XA, okay? So uh, this property is actually quite important, 
And sometimes this is what we say. We can just say that the error from, from projection is uh, okay an error to an error from projection to vector a is always orthogonal to vector a okay so this is actually an important property you can think about projection as um you know approximation you can think about it at that at that way okay so when we say we project a vector onto another vector in a way is an approximation of vector b with vector a okay so this error from approximation or estimation okay is orthogonal to uh, what what you want to uh, approximate okay Okay, so for this part, so we want to uh, check what is the angle, what is the x as well, okay? So from previous page, we say that x is orthogonal to xa, okay? Okay, so when we say orthogonal, uh, uh, because e is b minus xa, Okay, so we can say that uh, B minus XA is orthogonal to XA, okay? And uh, it means that if I do uh, uh, XA transpose or just A transpose multiply with the B minus XA, okay? Then I will get zero, okay? You can put X here or you don't have it. It doesn't change the values okay so from this property you can just uh, multiply uh, to inside the parentheses then you have a transpose multiply with b uh, minus a transpose multiply with a multiply with a okay but because the uh, x is just a scalar value. We can just pull pull it out, pull it to the front, and then here we can say a transpose times a equal to zero. Okay. Therefore, we can just write that this x value, meaning that is the um, the 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 size of the projection is. Um, uh, let me call. Let me not call anything. Let me, let's leave it as x, okay? So uh, we can just you know move to the other side. Then we have x is equal to a transpose multiply with b divided by a transpose multiply with a, okay? Or you can say that x, which is a scale, uh, right? Not that this is scalar. Okay, it's just a transpose mul multiply with b divided by uh, previously a transpose multiply with a is just the size of a square. Okay, so you can just uh, write it like this. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Okay. Okay. So let's say that uh, we are given that A, let's say that it's a three zero, which is uh, on the horizontal axis, okay? And then we have B, which is equal to one one, okay? But you can look at, you know, more, um, you know, higher dimension, but this is just for 2D, just uh, for checking, okay? So here what we have is the, Two dimension, so B just one one, okay. Okay, and A is three zero, so it's here. This is A, okay. And then we want to project B onto A. 
let me use a different color, which is the green, okay? So this will be like a projection, which is XA, okay? Okay. So if we want to find XA, we need to know X. So we want to know what is X. Okay. So from previous page, we can just use the relationship on the previous page that uh, X is equal to A transpose multiplied with B divided by um, size of A square. Okay. And uh, so this will be equals to three zero multiply with b which is 1 1 and divided by size of a square okay what is the size of a square what 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 is the square of the size of a here because a only has the one value right one element so you just you can just say is 9 uh, 3 square plus 0 square and a transpose multiply with b what you have is um, what three times one plus zero times one, right? So you have three divided by nine. So x is one third. Okay. So therefore, the projection x a. Okay. So this is called projection of b onto a okay so x a is just one third multiply with uh, three zero which is a okay so you have one zero okay. so this is like an a very simple example with the 2d but uh, the concept can be extended to a very high dimension you know like 10 by 1 100 by 1 and so on and A can be anything, you know, A doesn't have to be uh, 3, 0. It can be some other axis as well, okay? So, you have any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Maybe you've seen this already before, no? Okay, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask, okay? Next, uh, we want to find the angle, okay? If you want to find the angle between uh, between B and A, okay? So what do we find? Well, we can go to the uh, previous page here, okay? If we want to find the angle of theta here, okay? We notice that uh, we can find a sine or a cosine, right? So if I find the cosine, then I have a uh, we, I need to divide the size of projection with the size of B, okay? So if I want to find the angles, then I will have B, and this is the XA, okay? This is the, the uh, cos, this is, is theta. So I can do cosine, which is cosine is equal to the adjacent size, and then divided the size of the adjacent side divided by the size of the uh, the diagonal side. Okay, so here I will have this is the size of x a divided by the size of b. Okay, and uh, from the previous page because x is. Uh, a, tra a transpose multiply with B and divided by uh, the size of A square, okay? And then I multiply this with A and then I put the size at outside, okay? So this is, this is X, okay? This thing is X. And uh, divided by size of B, okay? So what I can do is um, the size of any two vectors is the size of each individual vector. So if I have the size of um, 
x times y okay this is just the size of x times the size of y okay but actually this is just the scalar right so it's simple so we can just say that this is the size of a transpose multiplied with b divided by the size of a square okay and for this part i can write separately as the size of a divided by size of b okay and you notice that this thing can cancel out okay so we will have that the cos of theta is the size uh well because a transpose multiplied with b is actually just a scalar value okay i can just take this out okay no need to write it because a transpose multiplied with b is just scalar value right so what i can do is the, i can write i can group terms i can write it as a transpose divided by size of a multiply with the with b divided by size of b okay so i can write it like this and uh, so basically uh, for each term here when we divide by the size we call normalized value okay so these are the normalized we call normalized uh, this word normalize sim is the quite similar to orthonormal when we say orthonormal is orthogonal plus normalization okay so here we i can just write as cosine of theta is equal to a normalized transpose divide uh, multiply with b normalized okay so so this a and b they are normalized normalized to have the size equals to one each okay so if you go back to the previous example we can compute the size okay or not the size the angle from this the relationship which is cosine of theta is a transpose multiplied with b divided by size of a times size of b okay okay so can anyone can you try to compute what is theta from the previous example okay i give you five minutes okay and then we can look at another property and then have a short break then come back to linear to uh, uh, to the approximation okay so i give you 5 minutes to try this okay So what do you get for um, cosine theta? Um, let's see, who, who haven't I asked much today? Ah, theta width. I don't think I I called you today. What do you get for cosine theta? One. So mm. root two. So you get. Uh, say again. Can you say again? What do you get? Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Square root two by two. Square root two over two, yeah. right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So which is which is also one over square root two, no? Same thing. So yeah. what is what? So what is the theta in this case? You can guess from the previous example, actually. <laughs> If you look at this b, you can guess no, but uh, so it's the forty-five degrees, right? Yes. Or it is equal to uh, pi over four, right? I see. But but in this case, you can sort of guess from the previous example because you see that uh, what is it? B is one one, right? This is from previous example. B is one one, so it's the one here and one here. So this theta has to be half of ninety degrees, right? Okay. But in general, you know, if you have higher dimension, maybe it's not easy to guess. And in this case, it's easy because A only has one element here. You know, if I ask you a a separate question, say I have. A is equal to uh, one minus one two three six, okay. And then I have B is equal to say zero minus zero two five one five, okay. Maybe I can ask the same question, but now it's not so easy to guess, right? If I ask you what is x a, then <laughs> it's not so easy to guess, right? Then if I ask you also what is cosine theta, also not so easy to guess now. So you understand what I'm saying, right? Okay. So, but you can use this type of uh, concept, you know, to to try to come up with the projection and also to come up with the theta or the angle. So we can have many dimensions, you know. We can have more elements and so on. Okay. So let's take a look at one more property, uh, inequality, which is a common one, and then we'll have a short break, and then come back to look at the last topic for today. Okay. Uh, one of the inequality that you may, uh, you will see or you may see already is called Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Uh, this inequality has different forms. But uh, when we talk about, you know, for when you talk about vectors, uh, it states that the size of vector x transpose multiply with y, which is in a way a projection, right, is less than or equal to the size of x multiply with y. Okay. So we're going to uh, prove this. Well, in a way, maybe it's quite simple to guess, you know. But uh, let's uh, prove it anyway, okay? But this is in general; it can be any dimension. It doesn't have to be just uh, uh, two by one, okay? So, but uh, in order uh, to make it easy to follow, so let's look at two D just for an example, okay? So for two D, let's say that uh, x is here. So let's say y is here, or b, you know, from previous example. Oops, this is y, and then let's say that x is here. Okay, so the projection of y onto x, which is x transpose multiply with y, is here. Let me call c x. Okay, so this is projection. Okay. So if you project y onto x, then you compute uh, x transpose multiply with y. The order slightly shifted, you know. So anyway, so let's prove this the inequality. Uh, how do we obtain these results? Okay. So let's prove. So first, let uh, c x be the projection. Okay. So from here, you notice that the size of y will always be larger than or equal to the size of projection. Okay. And uh, I can write it 
this thing as equal to C and then size of X. Okay. But C can be positive or negative. So I put an absolute values. Okay. So you notice that this is the difference. When we do this to absolute value, okay, this is for any scalar. But when we do the size like this, this is for vectors. Okay. So we use a different notation to separate. Okay, and when also when we write like this, when we say equals, it means this line is equal to this line, okay? But y, the size of y is still greater than or equal to c times size of x, okay? So this is what, this is what we mean. So I need more space now, so I'm going to write the right-hand side. I'm going to shift it a little bit to the left. So that is a bit easy to see, okay? And uh, so this C from the previous page, the size of C is just the size of X transpose multiplied with Y, okay? If you get confused with X, Y or A, B from the previous page, you can take a look back, okay? So this C is just the, the constant value on the projection. So it is equal to x transpose multiplied with y divide, divided by um, size of x square, okay? So this is c, and then you multiply with the size of x, okay? So this thing canceled out, okay? Therefore, you have that the size of y will be equals to, will be greater than or equal to this size, which is um, the size of x transpose multiplied with y, okay, and uh, divided by x, okay. Or you can just multiply this x, size of x, at the denominator to the left hand side, and then we, uh, we reverse the order. So you have that x size of x transpose multiplied with y is less than or equal to uh, magnitude, uh, the size of x multiplied with size of y, okay? So um, in up here, uh, maybe I should change the, the symbol instead of write it as the, the size, I write it as I can write it as the size like this, okay? So it is the same thing. So this Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is considered like an upper bound, okay? So this is upper bound, okay? When we have some value less than or equal to something, this the thing on the right-hand side is called upper bound, okay? If it is greater than or equal to, then we say lower bound. So that's how we say it, okay? Okay, so um, uh, let me see. Okay, so let's look, let's look at an example of what it is, okay? So let's say that I have that x is equal to a vector, say one, two, three, four, okay? And I have y equals to uh, one minus one, one minus one, for example, okay? And if I use the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality from the previous page, okay? So on the left-hand side, I will have uh, the size of x transpose multiplied with y, okay? Uh, the property is like this. It's less than or equal to the size of x times size of y, okay? So let's do on the left-hand side first. So if you multiply x transpose with y, uh, what do we get up here? Mm -hmm. 
this way. If you multiply x transpose with y, what do you get? So you get the magnitude of what one, then what? Minus two, and then what? Pure? Minus two. And then, then what? Three. <laughs> plus three and then minus, minus four, four right okay yes. and it should be less than or equal to the size of x multiplied with the size of y Sorry. so what's the size of x here size of x it's a x square root of one one square plus two square yeah plus four square, four square right yes and multiply with the size of y, y one square. Uh, just one plus one plus one plus one, one, plus no? one. <laughs> okay so the left hand side what do we have we have one minus two plus three minus four mm -hmm. so we get what uh, three. minus we get, three we get two oh, two sorry yeah and then on the right hand side what do we get we get square root 2 multiply with what 16 plus 9 25 plus 4 plus 1 yes. square root 30 yes. and multiply with the uh, square root of 4 which, means which two. is 2 yeah exactly yes. okay so so that's that's it mm -hmm. this is an example of the uh, cauchy schwarz inequality uh, which is the, a weak bound. It's not a it's not a tight bound. Okay, we call a weak bound. A weak bound means that uh, on the left hand side is very far from the right hand side. Okay, so the left hand side is very far from the right hand side. Okay, and there are some other some other inequality that has much better or tighter bound okay as well okay so let's have a short break like uh, for uh five minutes okay and then when we come back we will look at uh, the last topic on this lecture for today which is related to uh, least square approximation okay so we'll utilize what we learn here and uh, and compute the least square approximation Okay, a sim and with some example. Okay, so let's come back in five minutes. Okay, and then uh, you have any questions so far? Okay, if no question, we'll come back then. Okay, so uh, G, can you stop the recording by any chance? Okay, this. Should